So this is the throttle valve. Eh? The throttle valve at the beginning during starting, you will have it closed. Eh? Although it is in the closed position, actually there will be air coming through, still coming through out. So this waste gate is a butterfly valve, and also the throttle valve is also a butterfly valve. Eh? And it for the simplest uh, control for this turbocharger, there will be a linkage eh? like a batang besi lah. Eh? It is a rod that connects the throttle valve and the waste gate. Eh? So uh, one method is that you uh, okay ini. for takeoff at low density altitude. Eh? Low density altitude means it is at low altitude. Eh? Bukannya low density ya. Eh? Ah, tu dia mengkonfuskan tu. So ini pun eh, tak betul ni mengkonfuskan orang. Eh? So when we talk about density altitude, it is talking about altitude, eh? not the density. So the lower the altitude, the lower the, the density altitude means the density is very high. As you climb in altitude, then your density altitude, your density will become lower. Ah, tapi ah, density altitude ni menyusahkan eh. Ah, sepatutnya nak cakap altitude, altitude je lah. Density, density lah. Ah, sekarang bila you sebut density altitude, ah, low density, you ingatkan low density. Padahal dia cerita pasal altitude. Eh? So when we talk about density altitude, it is talking about altitude, not the density. Eh? So the density will be in the uh, opposite uh, from the altitude. Eh? As you climb in altitude, the density will become less. <coughs> so uh, during engine starting, okay, some of the okay. It depends on the manufacturer. Eh? Some of the manufacturer would want to have uh, the engine starting, uh, uh, let's say for this takeoff. Eh? Let's say for this, uh, uh, for this one, eh? you take off when you start the engine. The compressor is not running, eh? meaning the wastegate is fully open, meaning no exhaust or very little exhaust driving the turbine so the turbine is not turning and so but when you want to take off you are going to advance your throttle eh? meaning you push up your throttle to the maximum so some of the manufacturer will want to uh, not use the turbocharger yet eh? but as you climb in altitude then you have uh, the, uh, the engine to start using the turbocharger but actually if you look in this picture okay so you can see from the get go eh, from the sea level eh, it is already using the turbocharger uh, so it depends on the manufacturer some other manufacturer will want to use the turbocharger immediately some will be using it uh, when you climb in altitude and so it depends eh? but for the what do you call it the easy the easiest one the simplest form of turbocharger control there will be a connection between the throttle and the uh wastegate eh? as you know wastegate is the one to control the speed of the turbine and so when you close the wastegate then the turbine will be speeding up due to the more exhaust going to drive it. Eh? So because less exhaust is passing through the wastegate anymore. Uh, so uh, when you have the wastegate closing, the throttle valve is opening. That means that it is uh, allowing more air into the cylinder. So it depends on the manufacturer. Di untuk yang ini, untuk yang example dalam paragraf ni. Uh, for take off at low density altitude. Meaning low altitude lah. The throttle is advanced until the engine develops full throttle. Full take off power as indicated on the manifold pressure gauge. At this point, the waste gate will be fully or nearly open. Eh? So, uh, 
Dia waste gain tu tak berfungsi lagi lah. Eh? But as the aircraft gains altitude, the power di decreases which requires the pilot to advance the throttle forward to partially close the waste gain. So, uh, linkage untuk waste gain tu akan kick in when the throttle if is uh, pull, uh, further push forward. Eh? Uh, so, when it's uh, further push forward, then you will have Uh, the waste gate to be actuated. Eh? The waste gate is closing. Uh, so when waste gate is closing, more exhaust going to the turbine. Eh? So at engine engines at the engines critical altitude, the throttle is fully forward and the waste gate is fully closed. Eh? So like in the picture here. And so when the waste gate is fully closed, eh, during from the during the climbing from sea level to this uh, critical altitude, the waste gate is cl slowly closing, eh, slowly closing. And then when it reaches this certain altitude, then it cannot go beyond that anymore. Eh, why? Because the waste gate is already closed. It is already at maximum. So, but the aircraft is still climbing, and when the aircraft is still climbing, that means it is going to a lower density environment, low density air, ambient air. So, since your waste gate is already at optimum level, eh, meaning it is closed fully, then there is no way but to go down, eh, the, because the air keeps on getting thinner. Uh, the waste gate is already maximum, fully closed. So uh, there is no other way but to go down because uh, air is getting thinner as you climb in altitude. Eh? Okay, any question? No question? That is a... Uh, the second type of manual control system enables the pilot to set the position of the waste gate during control in the cockpit. Uh, so, other second type ni, con manual control ni, dia ada separate control. One is the throttle valve ada control lah. Eh, tetapi kita ada separate control for the waste gate. Jadi, pilot dah ada banyak control. Eh. Patutnya ada tiga saja, sekarang dah ada empat. Eh. Jadi, pilot dah pening kepala nak control tu, nak control tu. Jadi, itu pasal eh, everything we try to make it simpler for the pilot so we make them automated eh? even for the turbocharger it is going to be automated and eh? normally usually eh? uh, even fuel metering uh, for the carburetor fuel metering injection all those are uh, automated also eh? so we we'll learn about it in chapter 7 eh? but the turbocharger here There is a uh, uh, manual control, but also it will be uh, nowadays we normally have the automatic ones. Eh? Uh, and then the okay before we go for the automatic, uh, the last one, eh, the final type of manual waste gate controller is using the adjustable restrictor. Uh, so nampak ni figure yang bawah ni figure 511 ni. Dia nampak adjustable waste gate ni, ha, nampak dia tak ada perubahan. Eh? Dia cuma diubah pakai screwdriver. So this is fixed. Eh? It cannot be, it cannot be, uh, what you call it, change or control by the pilot. Eh? It has to be changed or adjusted only on ground eh? by the mechanic. Eh? So the mechanic. Uh, is the one to make this adjustment on how much the exhaust gas should be allowed to escape uh, to bypass the turbine. So maybe the mechanic set it to 25%. Eh? So maybe uh, 25% of the exhaust will pass through here, another 75% will go to drive the turbine. Uh. So it is fixed already. Eh? So it is a simpler uh, control that does not require the pilot to give an input. Eh? So pilot dah tak pening kepala lagi lah pasal waste gate ni dah automatically 
fixed, uh, automatically fixed to katakanlah 25%. Uh, jadi tak adalah pening kepala pilot cumanya the waste gate is not fully uh, utilized. It is not optim optimalized. Uh, it is not operating in the optimum. Uh, the optimum level would be you close this waste gate fully. Uh, tapi sekarang dia akan bocor juga 25% eh, sampai bila-bila until the mechanic changes the, the orifice. Eh, the orifice means bukaan lah. Eh, jadi uh, this is for uh, turbocharged aircraft that is going to fly at a low altitude lah. Eh, dia tak akan terbang tinggi. Eh. Kalau you kena fully close your waste gate, uh, baru you boleh terbang tinggi. Baru ada critical altitude semua. Eh? So this is the, the simpler one lah. Eh? So pilot tak payah pening-pening kepala, dia cuma control throttle saja. Boleh eh? Boleh okay. sir. So if there is no question, we move on to automatic control system. Eh? So we have uh, waste gate actuator. Kita ada okay. uh, Ni waste gate nya. So this waste gate is actually open in the open position normally. Normally it is in the open position when this piston is down here. And the piston is being pushed downward. This is piston eh. Ni cylinder, ni actuator lah. Ni actuator, cylinder, ada piston, ada spring. So this spring is going to push down this piston. When the piston is going downward, the waste gate is open. When the piston is going up, eh, it is resisting the spring. Then this waste gate is going to close. Eh? Jadi, yang bagi piston ni turun naik, turun naik ni ialah siapa? Engine oil. Engine oil ni nampak, eh, ni daripada oil pump lah ni. Oil pump masuk ke dalam silinder ni. Eh, dan dia akan lalu sini lah. Eh, dia akan lalu sini dan buang oil kat sini. Tetapi kalau lubang ni tersumbat, eh, dia tutup lubang ni. Apa jadi? Oil tak boleh pergi mana-mana. Bila oil dah tersangkut, apa jadi? Oil keeps on uh, getting in. Eh. Pressure, the oil pressure is getting in. And build up pressure over here. So, bila pressure build up, piston akan ternaik. Bila piston ternaik, waste gate pun akan tutup. Okay. Bila waste gate tutup, maka banyaklah exhaust terpaksa drive your turbine. It is being forced to drive your turbine. Bila, when you drive more exhaust driving your turbine, the faster the turbine will get. And then, of course lah, the speed of the turbine will be the same as the compressor speed. Eh? So the turbine is driving the compressor. The faster the turbine, the faster the compressor. And the more air will be sucked in because the compressor is moving very fast. Eh? And then you are going to build up the upper deck pressure. Okay, so this is called the upper deck. So this is the throttle valve. This throttle valve is at your fuel metering device. And down here, you call this manifold pressure. Okay, so this is the manifold pressure gauge in the cockpit. It is measuring the pressure just outside the intake port from the cylinder. Okay. So this is being controlled automatically by whom? By this APC. This is absolute pressure controller. And so it is a sensor. It is sensing the pressure of the upper deck. Then this is a, an evacuated below because it is measuring uh, pressure from the absolute. Absolute pressure means it will measure pressure from vacuum. So it is measuring from absolute zero vacuum pressure. Until at uh, high, high pressure lah. Eh? Nanti kita tengok uh, control F. F. 
Ah. So these are the controls in the cockpit, and then the, when you come back in the yard, and the engine and you can see this all this so uh, uh, this is a manifold pressure gauge yeah? so this manifold pressure gauge can you see this or not can you see this figure 2-9 guys right? so This is the manifold pressure gauge yang uh, yang aku tunjuk tadi. So ini unit dia sepatutnya dia ada tulis ni unit dia in inch mercury. Pernah dengar tak inch mercury? Tahu dia punya simbol macam mana? Tak tahu. Uh, HG cubic eh. Tak ingat lah. Inch. Inch lepas tu ada huruf H besar G. Pernah nampak? Ah, ada, ada, ada. Ah, tu masa fizik saya belajar tu. Jadi, if you can recall your physics, berapa, what is the pressure of the sea level using inch mercury? What is the pressure? Anyone can answer? Tak ada. Mana ni kon? Eh, so last time, eh, 14.7 psi is the sea level pressure. So it is equal to 29.92 inch mercury. Betul ke tak betul? Guys, right. okay, okay, you there? Oh, Shakir, ah? Betul. Apa yang betul? Pressure tu 29. Berapa? Nine eh. Ah, kau pernah sebelum dengar tu. ke sebelum ni? Pernah, pernah, pernah. Si level. Ah, itulah. So, dalam gambar ni, yang mana satu 29.92 tu? Mana? Dalam gambar ni. Dekat dia 14.7 eh. Ni, eh, nampak ni. Red ha? line. Nampak ha. red line ni. Eh. Nampak arrow aku tu tengah gerak-gerak tu dekat red line tu. Ah. Ah, itulah dia 29.92. Ah, tetapi ini manifold pressure ni untuk non pressurized engine eh. Ah, non boosted engine. Maksudnya normal aspirated. Normal aspirated maksudnya tak ada turbo charger, tak ada super charger. Jadi the manifold pressure is looking like this. Kalau dia turbo charger ataupun super charge, kalau ada compressor dia punya hijau ni, the green arc will not be here. The green arc should be up here. Sikit saja lah kat sini. Eh? Tetapi, since this is showing you about normal aspirator engine, the green arc is going to be here. Eh? Why? Okay, the needle cannot go. It should not go beyond the red line. Eh? Why? Because for normal aspirator engine, It will never get the manifold pressure to be the same 
as the outside air. So it won't be 14.7 PSI. It will be less than that. Eh? The volumetric efficiency will be less than 100%. Ada belajar belum volumetric efficiency? Ada belajar? Masa piston 1. Melon. Melon you there? Okay, Melon tak ada? Tak ada, ada. Hari tu aku ada ajar kau piston 1 kan? Ada? Melon? Melon? You there? Ya, ada. Ada, ada. Ha, dulu aku ajar kau piston 1 kan? Ah, pernah? Ha, kau pernah dengar tak aku cakap tu? Yang apa nama tadi? Yang aku tanya tadi? Volumetric efficiency sir. Ah, what is volumetric efficiency? Lah dia. Ah, tak apa. Nanti kau tengok aku ada buku banyak video dalam YouTube tu. Kan kau cari. Eh, volumetric efficiency tu maksudnya. Dan sepatutnya kalau silinder tu boleh sedut angin banyak. <coughs> Sepatutnya kalau angin luar tu 14.7, angin yang dalam silinder pun should be 14.7, betul? Ha, barulah dapat 100%. Tetapi sekarang, silinder tu sedut, pressure tu tak sampai 14.7. Pasal apa? Angin di luar tu 14.7, tapi angin dalam silinder tu mungkin 10 saja. 10 PSI saja. Pasal apa? Pasal angin nak lalu ha, filter, nak lalu venturi, nak lalu corner baring, lepas tu ada friction everywhere, jadi angin uh, angin kena masuk dalam sini, dia laju eh, eh kat, dalam 20 kali in one in one second eh, 10 kali in one second eh pasal RPM kan, eh 1000 revolution per minute jadi 500 uh, kali nak masuk dalam satu minit uh. jadi kena laju jadi angin yang masuk dalam sini untuk normal aspirated yang tiada kompresor pressure-nya mesti rendah daripada 14.7 mesti rendah daripada outside air kalau outside 14 di dalam 10 jadi volumetric efficiency dia rendah lah eh? less than 100 kalau 100% it should be 14.7 luar 14.7 dalam silinder pun 14.7 eh? tetapi untuk turbocharger ah itu yang Green, green arc tu maksudnya normal operation eh. Kalau supercharger atau turbocharger, the green arc should be up here. So the needle should not be operating less than the red line. Kalau normal aspirated, this needle should not go beyond the red line. Itu normal aspirated. Kalau uh, boosted induction, uh, dia terbalik. Eh. Needle should not go below this uh, red line. Pasal apa? Kalau normal aspirated, kalau dia go beyond this red line ataupun dia jejak red line ni, maksudnya ada kebocoran lah. Maksudnya, maybe your induction pipe tu sudah bocor. Jadi, angin tak masuk ikut filter lagi. Dia tak masuk ikut uh, fuel metering. Dia masuk ikut crack bocor tu. Jadi, you sudah sukat angin salah. Fuel pun salah masuk. Eh? Jadi, ada, kalau ada crack lah eh. Kalau turbo charger pun sama juga Turbo charger kalau Needle go below 29.92 inch Katakanlah dia apa? Uh, bacaan rendah lah Maksudnya volumetric efficiency dia rendah Maksudnya ada bocor jugalah uh, Jadi sepatutnya you kena 100% or more Tetapi sekarang you punya needle Sudah turun ke bawah Maybe ada bocor somewhere ataupun kompresor dah haus ke dah bocor type so needle line ah needle line pula red line ni maksudnya never across never across or not even touching it eh needle should not go touch this red line or go beyond it eh so let's go back to our So let's go back to here. So this is an example. Eh? This is one sensor. Kalau you terbang lagi tinggi, uh, it gets more complicated. Ada tambah, ada dua. 
eh, APC dengan ratio controller. Kalau ada lagi kompleks, then you are going to have uh, additional uh, density controller dengan differential controller. Eh, tetapi tujuan dia tetap sama. Tujuan dia adalah untuk control base gate. Macam mana dia control base gate? Dia, dia benarkan ataupun dia sekat oil flow. Eh, ni dia sekat oil flow ataupun tidak. Ha, itu cara dia control the waste gate. Tetapi if you look here. In this picture here. Ha, nampak tu? Ha, katakanlah we have this APC. We have this ratio controller. Eh? And then we have this relief valve. So in your opinion. The relief valve is controlling the waste gate or not? Huh? No, I'm not Alia. I'm not Alia. You there? Yes, I am. Ah, ingat kau tu. Di toilet tu. Ah, Alia pi toilet. Nasa bunyi. Saya baru nak pergi toilet, tapi saya dah panggil lah. Alah siannya. So, asal budak lelaki tu tahu kau nak pi toilet? Saya bagi tahu. Nanti kan saya panggil. Oh, okay. Ah, tapi aku tanya sekejap je ni. Tengok relief valve ni. In, in your opinion, dia kontrol tak ada waste gate? Dia kontrol ni ada waste gate tak? Kontrol apa ni? Waste gate. Ni waste gate nampak ni. Waste gate. Ah, is it controlling the waste gate or not? Uh... Ya, yeah, kursa. Hmm. Hmm, pasal apa? Pasti ya, saya. Pasal, nampak tu. APC ni, dia control needle valve eh. This is what you call needle valve. Aku tak sure lah kau nampak ke tidak eh. Tapi needle valve ni, nampak bontot dia lebar di bawah. Jadi bila, okay, ni ada belo. Belo ni, dia akan bergerak dengan needle valve ni. Kalau belo ni bergerak ke bawah, maksudnya dia kena tekan lah eh. Ni pressure upper deck. Pressure upper deck ni akan tekan this belo. This belo akan turun ke bawah. Needle valve pun akan turun ke bawah. Jadi bila turun ke bawah, uh, dia kecil di atas, lebar di bawah. Jadi fuel, uh, bukan fuel, oil. Oil akan uh, boleh lalu. Oil boleh lalu. Eh, tapi kalau... Katakanlah apa deck ni dah rendah pressure dia. This below is going up. So does the needle valve. So the, the needle valve is going up also. So it will close. Eh, why? Because the bottom is big. So it will close the hole. So oil cannot flow anymore. So when oil is uh, flowing or not, it will determine the uh, what is going on here. The waste gate actuator. Eh, so if there there is no oil flow, so there will be pressure build up. So when oil is building up pressure here, it will push the piston up and closing the waste. If the oil can flow again, then you will have no pressure build up here. The piston will go downward and waste gate will open. So is that APC controlling the waste gate or not? Sir, line tak apa pelu sikit. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh, apa tak apa sir? APC ni, is it controlling the waste gate directly or not? Uh, no, sir. Why not? Uh, because uh, waste gate uh, is on the different, apa ni orang kata, yang root, yang yellow tu. PC tu dia just control, dia just control air masuk kan. Rasanya lah. Okay, sebenarnya, if you look here, the APC. It is uh, allowing and disallowing oil movement. So when it allows or disallow oil movement, it will uh, determine what is going on in the wastegate actuator. Eh? So let's say the APC is blocking the oil passage. So oil cannot go anywhere but to build up pressure over here in the actuator. So the piston is going up and the wastegate is going down. If the APC is unblock the oil passage, then the oil will flow out, no more pressure build up, piston will go down and whisk it will open. So in that sense, 
Can you say that the APC is controlling the wastegate or not? Yes, sir. Uh, ah. APC control the wastegate. Yeah. But now my question is about relief valve. From this picture, relief valve. Uh, from this picture, do you think the relief valve has a direct control over wastegate? Uh, no, sir. Why not? Because the relief valve, uh, they just apa ni, remove excessive pressure. Ah, dia, uh, dia tak ada control engine oil, betul? Nah. Ah, betul. Eh, tetapi, actually, relief valve ni, when they relieve uh, the pressure inside the upper deck, uh, dia pun akan macam, apa nama ni? Uh, macam bagi pressure dalam upper deck ni berbeza lah. Bila upper deck punya pressure berbeza, dia punya belo ni pun akan berbeza lah pergerakan belo ni. Eh? Hmm. Yeah, indirectly controlling. Eh? Tetapi, it has no direct control over the position of the waste gate. Eh? Only the ratio controller and the APC has direct control. Eh? Because it is having this... Uh, uh, needle valve to open and closing the, the passageway of the engine oil. And so when you block the engine oil, pressure will build up here and uh, opening the waste gate. If you allow the oil to flow, then there is no pressure build up, piston will go down, waste gate will open. So only the APC and the ratio controller. Eh? So, okay, sir. Thank you. So, uh, okay, so let's go back to this APC. Eh? So, this APC. Okay, tengok. Yang ini tak ada pula relief valve. Uh, jadi, it depends on the manufacturer. Eh? Ada manufacturer nak bubur relief valve, ada yang tak payah. Pasal apa tak payah? Pasal dah ada APC. APC sudah sense. Uh, jadi, uh, it is being controlled solely by the APC. Tak ada relief Eh, tapi ada manufacturer akan bubur relief valve. So it depends. Eh. Um, bila dia bubur relief valve tu sebagai backup lah. Eh, backup to relieve the pressure. The access. Why? Because you don't want to burst your your piping. Eh, this induction piping, you don't want it to burst because it is not welded. It is just sambung-sambung uh, saja. Eh. Cantum-cantum pakai rubber, pakai getah semua tu. Eh. Jadi Excessive boosting will cause it to burst and leak. So you don't want that to happen. So depends on the manufacturer nak bubuh ke tak nak bubuh ke apa relief valve ni. It depends on that. And so this relief valve is just opening and closing the upper deck so to relieve uh, excessive pressure. Uh, so it is already set. Eh? The relief valve punya pressure. To Okay, so uh, this is the manifold pressure gauge that I mentioned just now. And the one that I showed you, uh, the inch mercury. Eh, it is, the unit is inch mercury. So this is the manifold pressure. This is the upper deck. So the upper deck pressure is not only to give uh, ample air to the cylinder, but also to pressurize your cabin, uh, to uh, operate your instrument. So a lot of other things. Eh? So the upper deck should be higher in pressure compared to the manifold, eh? because it is not only feeding the cylinder but also feeding the uh, cabin system, eh? the pressurization system. So if you go to higher altitude, you need to pressurize your cabin. So when you pressurize your cabin, there will be more. Uh, things to do. Eh? There will be more complex system that you are going to operate. So as you go at higher altitude, you need to control uh, your, what do you call it, this uh, upper deck, so it is not going to be overboost. So when you have overboosting, you are going to burst eh, the piping. So that is very bad. So to prevent that, you are going to have the uh, ratio controller. So, as you go higher in altitude, there will be more complex system. You are going to pressurize everything, pressurize cabin and everything. So, you need to have a ratio controller. So, 
this ratio controller is measuring the difference between the upper deck pressure and the ambient air pressure. So like your Duke 60 yeah, in Miat, it is a pressurized cabin, a piston engine, turbocharger, turbocharged engine. Then you will have this, yeah, this ratio controller. It is measuring the difference between the upper deck and also the ambient air. So the difference for the Duke 60 is around 3 PSI. Eh? Uh, so let's say the aircraft is climbing to 20,000 feet, but the cabin should not at uh, sea level. It should be around maybe 8,000. Uh, I mean the pressure density, eh? the pressure density inside the cabin. Eh? It is like you are flying at 8,000 feet in the cabin. But in reality, the whole aircraft is at 20,000 feet. So just to make sure the difference between the outside and the inside should not exceed 3 PSI. Okay. <clears throat> this APC, uh, I, I forgot to mention about the APC, and this absolute pressure control is measuring the upper deck, solely the upper deck. And so the, uh, it is uh, measuring the absolute pressure. And you have here the evacuated, uh, what do you call it, below. And this below is attached to the needle valve. Same thing with the ratio controller. It has a below, but this below here is filled with the upper deck pressure. And the surrounding is the ambient air. Uh, for the APC, it is evacuated uh, below. And then you have the... Uh, upper deck uh, so the upper deck is surrounding the bellow but the the both both bellows are attached to the uh, needle valve yeah, so this ratio controller the bellow also is attached to the needle valve here also the needle valve is attached to the bellow same thing and that needle valve is going to open or closing depending on the need of the aircraft okay okay so um, kita buat kelas ni 2 jam eh, boleh ya? Eh? Guys, boleh ya? Eh? Have any question? Tak ada, sir. Eh? So, uh, let's continue this gambar ni pula. Okay, so if you go to higher altitude, then you need to have more complex uh, system eh, to control your wastegate. So here we have another system, a sea level booster turbocharger. Maintains an engine sea level performance up to the engine's critical altitude. Ha, tu macam graph. Graph yang aku tunjuk tadi lah. Eh, so, this, uh, then we have here the density controller and here we have the differential pressure control. So this density controller, it is going to uh, compare, it is going to compare the density of this upper deck with a nitrogen uh, stored in the bottle right here. Eh? Tapi sepatutnya ada gambar ni, sepatutnya ada gambar bottle nitrogen kat sini, tapi nampaknya tak ada. Eh? So this bottle nitrogen, dia adalah sea level pressure, 14.7 PSI. Jadi, uh, this bottle nitrogen ni yang akan uh, tentukan yang upper deck ni pun ialah sea level pressure which is ataupun more than 14.7 eh. Atau, okay, pasal apa? Pasal kita nak maintain manifold pressure. Kita nak maintain manifold pressure ni at 14.7 PSI. Eh, sea level boosted Uh, sea level booster turbo charger ni maksudnya dia nak buat 100% volumetric efficiency. So 100% means 14.7 lah yang ada dekat manifold pressure ni. Eh? Tetapi upper deck ni dia akan bagi pada manifold pressure, dia akan bagi pada cabin, uh, bagi pada instrumen. Jadi upper deck ni mestilah pressure ni lagi tinggi. Eh, bila pressure ni lagi tinggi, eh, jadi uh, manifold pressure ni pun uh, dia akan uh, apa nama ni? Uh, 
uh, manifold pressure dia nak maintain 14.7 jadi dia ni akan di dia akan mengkontrol differential pressure control uh, untuk maintain dia 14.7 di pressure upper deck ni tak boleh terlalu tinggi, tak boleh terlalu rendah. Uh, uh, maksudnya tak boleh terlalu tinggi ya. Eh. Yang dia ni, uh, yang density controller ni, dia akan control supaya upper deck ni jangan rendah daripada pressure nitrogen. So, dia akan send. Jadi, uh, dia ni control jangan uh, lagi rendah, jangan lagi rendah daripada nitrogen ni. Tetapi yang Uh, differential pressure control ni dia tak nak uh, apa nama tu difference between the man, uh, upper deck dengan manifold ni terlalu tinggi maksudnya dia nak jangan kasih jangan kasih apa nama tu upper deck ni terlalu tinggi lah uh, jangan uh, jadi yang satu ni untuk tinggikan pressure yang satu lagi ni untuk rendahkan pressure eh, jadi uh, apa nama tu dia katakanlah uh, katakanlah apa deck ni rendah eh pressure dia katakan di apa yang berlaku di piston ni piston lah ni eh piston ni akan tertolak ke kiri pasal apa nitrogen ni pressure dia tinggi uh, katakanlah pressure dia 15 psi lah katakan ni benda tu akan tertolak ke kiri dan dia akan menutup lubang oil ni ni bila lubang oil ni tertutup dia tak boleh bergerak jadi oil yang ada dekat uh, apa nama ni biskit ni dia akan build up in pressure bila dia build up in pressure piston akan ternaik wastegate akan tutup bila wastegate tutup more exhaust gas is driving the turbine the turbine will be turning this uh, compressor and this compressor is going to suck more air to give to the upper deck. Jadi pressure akan naik. Bila pressure naik, ini akan tendang baliklah ke kanan. Ha, tadi ke dia cakap, ha, tadi dia tendang ke kanan, ha, sekarang dia sudah tendang ke kiri. Okey. Tendang ke a uh, sebelah sinilah eh kiri eh. Sebelah kanan. So begitulah dia mengkontrol the upper deck pressure eh. Tetapi kadang-kadang Uh, dia punya respon tu lambat eh pasal apa dia keep on rising in upper deck jadi pressure upper deck ni makin lama makin tinggi makin lama tinggi dia ni pula lambat untuk respon dia ni lambat untuk uh, apa uh, menutup tu menutup engine oil punya flow ni eh untuk membuka dia jadi uh, apa kita akan ada over boosting ha uh, over boosting jadi to prevent over boosting eh bila pressure nanti kegang dia bila dia tolak ke sini dia tolak ke kiri dia mula buka oil jadi wastegate akan terbuka lah. Ha, tapi pressure dah terlalu tinggi. Ha, kan nanti bila dah terlalu tinggi dia dah tekan banyak dia dah buka ha, habis lepas tu wastegate terbuka lepas tu bila wastegate terbuka kompresor uh, ni pun slow. Bila kompresor slow, tiba-tiba drop in upper deck. Bila upper deck pressure terlalu rendah, uh, dia ni pun tolak ke kanan balik. Bila tolak ke kanan, dia tutup balik oil passage. Tapi dah terlalu rendah. Bila dah terlalu rendah, dah lambat, yeah, dia dah tolak ke kanan ni kegang. Apa? Wastegate ni pun lambatlah untuk menutup. Bila wastegate lambat menutup, lambatlah terbaik nak laju. Jadi pressure tu akan naik, lepas tu turun, naik, turun. Jadi itu apa nama dia? Upper deck tu nanti akan jadi pressure dia kejap naik, kejap turun. Kejap naik, kejap turun. Dia tak stable. Ha, pasal apa? Ni, uh, density controller ni respon dia lambat. Jadi itu nama dia bootstrapping. Eh. Bootstrapping. Ha, ni. Bootstrapping occurs when the turbocharger system senses small changes in temperature or speed of both and continually changes the turbocharger output in an attempt to establish equilibrium. Ha, maksudnya dia akan, pressure tu akan naik tinggi. Lepas tu 
turun mendadak naik turun naik turun jika tak ada jika tak ada differential pressure control ha, jika tak wujud differential pressure control ni hanya ada density controller ni saja jadi itu yang akan berlaku eh, pressure akan naik terlalu tinggi lepas tu bila dia nak katup dah, dah turun turun pula lambat pula respon ha, dia dah turun habis ha, terlalu banyak Nah, lepas tu dia respon balik pergi ke kanan balik ah naik balik so pressure apa dah tu akan fluctuate dia akan naik turun naik turun tu nama dia boot slapping tu tu nah, pasal apa boot asut boot kau tu kau kat dia tu kan ah, naik turun naik turun macam tulah ah, so this is boot slapping lah ni ah, dia pressure tu kejap naik kejap turun kejap naik dia, dia tak stable jadi untuk mempercepatkan stability itu, itu kena ada differential pressure control. Differential pressure control ni yang akan tentukan what is the ratio between the upper deck and the manifold pressure. So manifold pressure ni ada very sensitive lah. Eh kalau pressurenya terlalu tinggi, the pressure terlalu tinggi dia akan naik. Eh dia akan naik, dia akan stop ni. silap eh. Kalau upper deck ni terlalu tinggi eh, upper deck ni terlalu tinggi, pressure dia with respect to manifold pressure, so dia akan tekan ke bawah. Bila dia tekan ke bawah oil akan flow bila oil akan flow, maksudnya pressure dalam actuator ni dah tak, dah turun lah eh, pressure dah tak ada. Jadi waste gate akan terbuka. So, dia akan slow down the turbine, slow down the compressor and upper deck akan menjadi rendah. Haa So the upper deck is being controlled by the density controller and also differential. Differential tu untuk menurunkan pressure dengan cepat. Eh, density controller ni untuk menaikkan pressure dengan cepat. Jadi dia akan stable dengan cepat. Eh, kalau tak ada yang differential controller ni nanti pressure naik terlalu tinggi. Lepas tu bila density controller respond dia dah terlalu rendah. So dia akan fluctuate banyak. Dengan adanya differential pressure controller ni dia akan dengan cepat. Eh, dia akan dengan cepat untuk slow down the compressor supaya upper deck tu tak terlalu tinggi. Faham tak apa benda aku cakap ni? Apa ada soalan? Huh? Apa aku nak tanya? So, ulang balik sekali, sir. Ah, aku nak ulang setakat mana? Yang daripada mula ke? Daripada mana kau nak aku ulang? Dekat the city controller. Okay, daripada mula lah tu. Okay. So, ah, then city controller ni, dia to compare the pressure inside this nitrogen bottle di sini sepatutnya ada gambar sinilah nitrogen bottle kat sini dengan upper deck. Ni upper deck lah ni. Yang warna biru ni nampak ni dah ada tulis upper deck. Then equal pressure selepas you throttle valve ni. Ni throttle valve ni dekat venturi dekat filtering dekat carburetor. Nah ni. Ni upper deck ni eh yeah, upper deck lah. Ni pool pressure ni dia mesti maintain Sea level eh, pasal ni ialah sea level booster turbo charger eh. Jadi dia mesti maintain 14.7 PSI. Bila dia maintain 14.7 PSI, uh, apa nama ni? Uh, of course lah dia maintain yang 14.7 PSI, uh, dia akan. Okay, ni. Density controller ni, kalau uh, Of course lah density uh, upper deck ni mesti pressure nya lebih tinggi daripada manifold pressure. Pasal apa? Upper deck ni dia akan bagi untuk cabin pressurization, eh, untuk instrument, untuk lain-lain. Bukan setakat untuk bagi kat manifold ni saja. Eh, dia banyak lagi benda lain dia nak bagi. Jadi of course upper deck pressure should be higher than the manifold pressure. Okay. And this upper deck eh, pressure is being sensed, being compared to the nitrogen bottle over here. This nitrogen bottle, let's say the pressure is around maybe 16, 16 psi. Eh? 
So it will compare the upper deck pressure. If the upper deck has lower pressure compared to the nitrogen, then this piston will move to the right. Okay, it will move to the right. And when it moves to the right, it will close the needle valve. Suppose this part here, yeah, there, there should be a needle valve also here. And so this needle valve, when it goes to the right, it will close the passage, the pathway, the oil, the oil passage. Yeah? So oil cannot move, cannot uh, get out anymore. So it is stuck there. So it is going to build up the pressure in this uh, wastegate actuator and close the wastegate. Do you understand, Moaz? So far, Moaz, you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, jadi. When you close the passageway here, the oil cannot move, so it builds up pressure here in the wastegate actuator, and the wastegate is going to close. So when the wastegate is closed, more exhaust will go to the turbine to move the turbine. The turbine will move the compressor faster, and uh, the compressor sucking more air from outside to go into the upper deck. And so the upper deck has increased in pressure. So when the upper deck is increased in pressure, it will push this piston back to the left. Okay, so back to the left. So this needle valve is going to open once more. So when it is open, there is no more pressure build up over here because the oil can move once again. And the oil can move freely once again. So that is the density controller, eh? but the density controller is actually uh, controlling so that the upper deck should be go uh, should be having high pressure. So it is measuring so that you maintain high pressure in the upper deck. Eh? But to close, I mean to what do you call it, to let the oil out. So that you don't uh, close the wastegate anymore, it is going to be delayed a little bit. <clears throat> the response is a little bit late. Why? Because the pressure here is already high. Only then you release the oil. Only then you release the oil. Only then the wastegate is going to uh, open, which is very late already. And because the movement of the exhaust here and this uh, movement of the compressor here is still high. And the response is not fast enough. It's not quick enough. So what will happen is that the upper deck is going to keep on building up higher and higher. So that is not what you want. Eh? You don't want to overboost your upper deck. You understand that? Moaz, you understand that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, so, bila apa nama ni? Bila dia nak tunggu compressor ni slow down, the upper deck is already at very high pressure. Eh? To wait for the compressor to slow down, it is too late already. The upper deck is very high in pressure. So, to avoid that, to avoid uh, what do you call it? Uh, over pressurization. Eh? Okay, katakanlah dah terlebih, eh? dah terlebih uh, pressure. Lepas tu, to release the oil. Lepas tu, uh, compressor ni pula dah slow down. Bila slow down pula, dah apa nak nunggu lagi. Uh, pressure ni rendah. Lepas tu, piston ni nak pergi ke kanan balik. Dah terlalu rendah. Jadi, pressure tu akan menjadi terlalu tinggi. Lepas tu bila dia ni nak operate balik piston ni nak ni lepas tu nak block oil ni dia dah terlalu rendah. Faham tu Muaz? Muaz? Faham saya faham. Ah jadi pressure tu akan jadi begitu sentiasa. Dah terlalu tinggi, terlalu rendah. Terlalu tinggi, terlalu rendah. Jadi pressure tu akan jadi bootstrapping macam you ikat you punya boot tu. Eh naik turun, naik turun, naik turun. Dia tak stable. 
Betul Mas. Mas? Betul. Ha. Jadi untuk mengelakkan instability eh, over boosting and then dropping pressure too low at the upper deck eh pressure tu tak stable dia naik turun naik turun naik eh tak berhenti-henti jadi kita kena ada satu lagi which is called the differential pressure control so the differential pressure control is measuring the upper deck pressure with respect to the manifold pressure jadi kalau manifold pressure tu maintain 14.7 psi you punya apa nama ni upper deck ni akan terlalu tinggi bila upper deck terlalu tinggi uh, manifold pressure maintain 14.7 so ni ada diaphragm ni diaphragm ni akan tekan ke bawah ha? tekan ke bawah needle valve ada kat sini so this needle valve akan tertekan ke bawah dan dia akan buka oil kalau needle valve naik ke atas dia tutup oil jadi bila tutup oil pressure tu naik lah nah, kalau dia buka oil maksudnya no more pressure here no more oil pressure build up at the actuator of the wastegate so wastegate will open wastegate will open you slow down the compressor very quickly eh, you do not wait for the density controller you ah Uh, controlling it by using the differential pressure controller uh, differential pressure control so it releases the oil before the density controller even manage to release it yeah? so it is a very quick response eh? so dia tak sempat nak naik tinggi, -tinggi dia dah turun balik pasal this uh, differential pressure control is controlling the wastegate movement very quickly eh? very sensitively eh? yang dia akan buka wastegate ni untuk slow down the compressor uh, almost immediate. Faham tu? Mas. Faham. Um. Uh, kau kalau kau tak faham juga nanti you tengoklah balik rakaman ini. Ini rakam kan? Uh, ada rakaman nanti tengoklah balik. Eh, memang dia start sikit lah tapi you uh, kalau you tak faham juga nanti you boleh tanya ataupun uh, no worry eh, no, problem, no problem okay so that is the bootstrapping eh. bootstrapping tadi aku dah cakap ni when the turbocharger sends a small changes in temperature or speed of work and continually changes the turbo output in an attempt to establish equilibrium tapi dia tak establish pun equilibrium pasal dia Uh, keep on turun naik turun naik eh, respon dia tak apa-apa cepat eh. boleh ya any anyone got any other question anyone has the same question ke anyone ask me question now before we continue tak ada ok you there ada sir yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you have any question No. Uh, Komen jang je no, nak habis cepat lah ni. Okay, so let's, con okay kalau tak ada question, we move to turbo compound system. Okay, so turbo compound system nampak ni. Ni ialah uh, radial engine punya crankshaft lah ni. Eh. So, as you know already, radial engine, they use supercharger, isn't it? Supercharger is being driven by the crankshaft, suck air, Uh, to force the air to go into the system. Eh, jadi uh, apa nama ni radial engine sudah ada compressor. Jadi dia tak perlukan turbo charger. Turbo charger ni biasanya you install dekat 6 uh, cylinder 6 cylinder opus engine or 8 cylinder opus engine. Tapi untuk radial engine dia sudah ada compressor and this compressor is being driven by the crankshaft. Eh, bila propeller pusing saja Ah, compressor pun berpusing. Tetapi, ah, tetapi as you know, kita ada, it, okay, radial engine tu ada 18 silinder. It is a very big engine with a lot of exhaust coming out. And as you know already, we are wasting 45% of the total energy from from combustion 
through exhaust which is very wasteful so radial engine biasanya dia akan pasang juga turbine eh, dia akan pasang macam turbo charger lah tapi turbo charger is turbine driving compressor tetapi here we have the turbo compound system which is called the power recovery turbine eh, so it is a power recovery turbine it is not a supercharging system it's not a it's not driving a compressor but it is driving gears you see ha, ni turbine ni exhaust yang banyak tadi daripada 18 silinder so membazirlah you buang macam tu saja so apa you nak bikin you akan pusingkan turbine ini untuk memberi to change the heat energy into mechanical energy mechanical energy tu apa ialah rotational motion ni. Ah, uh, so this rotational motion, eh, cause the turbine is being driven by the exhaust gas from the 18 cylinders. Ah, uh, the mechanical energy dia very high. Jadi dia akan give back this mechanical energy into the gearbox. So this gearbox is going to supply this. Uh, extra mechanical energy to the pro, uh, to the crankshaft and the crankshaft will turn the propeller much more uh, with much more power very simple isn't it so that is the book of power any question no question eh? guys ah the So, kalau tak ada question, I think we continue with chapter 6. Oh, belah habis lagi. So, this is uh, the gambar of the of the whole system. Okay, so, here you can see that this is the upper deck and this is the compressor, this is the turbine. The compressor is giving high pressure and not only for the cylinders but it is also giving pressure to the fuel pump discharge nozzle and to the cabin and to the wastegate controller and jadi upper deck itu banyak tugas dia bukannya sekadar untuk uh, bagi silinder oksigen saja dia kena bagi dekat cabin pressurization fuel system bagi dekat system bagi dekat instrument fuel system jadi ada banyak eh so okey ni gambar uh, exhaust ni dikumpulkan untuk ah uh, ni ada wastegate ah uh, sepatutnya gambar wastegate tu kena lah buat macam ni barulah sama eh dia butterfly bar juga eh uh, then ah uh, okey so tak ada apalah ni aku ceritakan ulangan aja lah ni ada question takkan ni apa question ah Aiman Iskandar you there ada saya ada ah tak ada soalan ya tak ada tak ada okay, kalau tak ada we continue with chapter so chapter 6 tu dia very simple lah dia ah So, reciprocating exhaust system, we have two types. Eh? We have the short stack and then we have the collector. Eh, kalau collector tu macam ni lah rupanya. Eh? Ni ada, katakanlah ada 6, 6 silinder. Eh? So, sebelah kiri ada 3, sebelah kanan ada kiri. Eh, ada kiri. Ni yang tiga ni dia kumpul buang dekat satu corong saja. Itu collector lah tu. Eh? Ha, ataupun risers. Eh? Risers tu pun ha, ni dia menaik lah ni. Dia menaik, dia kumpul. Eh? Dia collect. Ha. Jadi yang short stack tu macam mana rupanya? Ha, ni collector jugalah ni. Ni collect, dia collect belah kiri, belah kanan. Lepas tu dia direct the exhaust to drive the turbine drive the turbo charger dan dia akan keluar sejuk pasal apa sejuk? pasal uh, dia dah hilang tenaga untuk pusingkan turbine ni jadi dia keluar sejuk lah sikit tak adalah sejuk sangat tapi sejuk lah daripada yang asal 
Ha, so dia keluar ikut corong yang satu. Ha, ada enam silinder, corong keluar satu saja. Itu collector lah juga. Ini sama lah juga macam ni. Ini radial engine punya. Ha, dia kelak, kelak, kelak. Buangkan satu corong saja. Ha, tetapi untuk short stack ini macam. Ha, dia individual silinder ada corong masing-masing. Jadi kalau ada enam silinder, ada enam lah corongnya. Kalau lapan silinder, lapan lah corongnya. Jadi asal kepul-kepul keluar macam tu. Ha, jadi tak berapa aerodinamik, tak berapa cantik lah. Ha, tapi very simple. It is just a corong. Simple. Jadi yang collectors tu biasanya ah collectors tu ada banyak kegunaan dia untuk drive terbang, eh, untuk drive tempur saja dan juga untuk bubuh dalam ni. Ah untuk enjin yang kecil-kecil macam enjin ah four cylinder dia ada exhaust muffler. Ah exhaust muffler tu apa dia hari tu aku cakap? Tugas dia apa? Guys. Ah Zaki Zaki Waji Hudin, no? Yes. Oh tak ada? Yes. Ha. Do you know the purpose of the muffler or not? To slow kan sir, bunyi. So apa? Slow kan. Tak dengar? Apa dia? The reduce noise sir. Ha. Dia, dia tugas dia tu Okay lah, muffler tu maksudnya reduce noise lah. Tapi tugas utama dia bukannya itu. Tugas utama dia is to heat up fresh air. Ha, nampak ni? Ini in, uh, engine exhaust muffler ni dia ada two compartment. Eh? One is for the fresh air. The other one is for the exhaust. So the first compartment is the exhaust. Ni dalam ni. Dia, maksudnya dia tak bercampur dengan fresh air. Dia cuma transfer heat saja. Ini exhaust gas tu akan lalu sini dan fresh air akan lalu di sekelilingnya. Ha, melainkan kalau ada crack lah. Kalau crack maksudnya exhaust dah bercampur dengan udara segar lah. Jadi that is very bad. Pasal apa? Exhaust gas tu panas. Lepas tu ada carbon monoxide, ada carbon dioxide. Jadi fresh air yang dipanaskan ni bukannya tujuan dia khas untuk uh, bagi heated air to the carburetor. Bukan. It's tetapi juga dia untuk cabin heat ha, cabin heater ha, jadi yang ada exhaust muffler ni bukan saja untuk carburetor heater tetapi juga untuk cabin heater ha, jadi kalau cabin heat eh, angin yang masuk tu ada exhaust ada carbon monoxide ada carbon dioxide dah kena hypoxia passenger occupants jadi nanti mabuk, eh, hitam, ah, dah crash. Ah, jadi tak nak lah jadi macam tu eh. Ah, so dua compartment ni mesti berasingan. Dia tak boleh crack. Ah, jadi selalulah we are going to do periodically. Ah, we we are periodically test this uh, exhaust muffler. Whether they have cracks or not. Ah, so macam mana mau check dia. Ah, bubuh angin dalam ni. Ha, tutup, masuk dalam air rendam, tengok ada bubble keluar ke tak, sama macam checking your tire bicycle ke apa ke, tengok bocor ke tak bocor tayar ha, kalau ada bubble ha, bubur marking kat situ nanti pergi hantar kat old shop will be guys, you there? can you hear me? boleh sir dengar ha, sir dengar ada putus ke? Ada putus? Tak ada pun. Tak ada putus eh? Pasal aku punya komputer ni berbunyi. Okay, never mind. Uh, so, bila ada crack, apa mau bikin? You bubur marking. Marking pakai apa? Marking pakai chalk. Chalk tu kapu. Eh, jangan pakai graphite. Jangan pakai carbon. Jangan pakai plumbum. Eh, jangan pakai... Any other that can cause uh, hotspot. Eh? Hotspot tu macam petroleum based product. Eh? Uh, macam carbon, macam plumbum. Itu marking-marking semua tu akan concentrate heat. Bila dia concentrate heat, dia akan produce crack. Jadi, bila you buat marking, kan marking tu pula yang ada crack. Jadi, jangan pakai benda-benda tu. Eh? Pakai chalk saja. Ataupun pakai lah 
macam ke plan pet ha thing yang apa yang non carbon non carbon base non petroleum base non metal metal base eh ha, pakai kapu ajalah eh jadi bila sudah tengok tak ada crack ke apa ha kasi kering lah ha jemur tengah panas ataupun you pakailah compress air eh compress air tu buanglah air dia dulu baru sembuh sembuh pun jauh-jauh sikit jangan dekat-dekat sangat ya yeah, ha keringkan dia and if you look at this exhaust compartment yang exhaust yang mengandungi exhaust gas ni nampak tu dia ada macam stubs eh stub tu dia macam terbonjol-bonjol macam tu which is there to aid in cooling heat transfer eh to aid in heat transfer jadi heat transfer kena ada banyak surface macam you nak sejukkan air kopi you tebarkan dia dekat piring pasal apa you tebar dekat piring pasal you want to increase the surface for heat transfer jadi bila kopi tu you tebar dekat piring dia dah jadi banyak permukaan untuk heat transfer dia cepat sejuk lah faham tu faham tu Syakir ok Syakir Abdul Hakim Abdul Hakim pun tidur juga. Hello sir. Ha, faham tu apa benda aku cakap ni? Faham sir. Ya so stubs tu dia untuk menambahkan permukaan. Permukaan tu apa? Syakir? Dan? Ha ya sir. Ha. Aku baru sebut tadi Syakir eh, apa? Syakir. Stub ni untuk apa? SPUB ya eh, stubs. Eh, so dia terbonjol-bonjol ni dia untuk apa Syakir? To heat tu lah transfer. Ah ha, untuk banyakkan permukaan, permukaan ha. untuk heat transfer. Lagi cepatlah ha, heat transfer tu berlaku Zenit. Ya yeah, betul betul. Ah ha, jadi ha, dengan cepat lah angin yang bersebut jadi panas jadi bila exhaust tu lalu sini dia banyak hilang tenaga lah pasal dia dah panaskan udara yang sejuk luar ni tadi so angin exhaust yang masuk dalam sini akan keluar menjadi lebih sejuk eh, bila angin tu lebih sejuk maksudnya bunyi dia pun tak adalah kuat sangat eh, kalau angin tu panas dia akan bising kalau angin tu sejuk dia ada senyap sikit lah Eh, so, those gas that comes out from the muffler will be slightly cooler. So, a little bit less noisier. Eh, less noisy. Ah, less noisy. Faham tu? Apa ada soalan? Ada soalan? Okay, kalau tak ada soalan, go to the next one which is the one with augmented tube. Eh, the exhaust with augmented tube. So this augmented tube, it is not connected directly to the exhaust. Eh? The exhaust is here, the pipe is here, but then you see that the augmented tube is not welded. Eh? Dia tak ada bercantum dengan augmented tube ni, tetapi dia akan sembuh exhaust inside the augmented tube. Uh, what is the reason in your opinion? Apa aku nak tanya ni? Lohman Hakim. Lohman Hakim you there? Ah, Lohman Hakim tak ada. Okey aku tak apalah aku tanya ni. Fazil. Fazil you there? Fazil pun tidur juga. Fadli? Fadli pun yes, tidur. Ah, ramai menua yang tidur hari ni. Ha, dengar? Ha, dengar saya. Okay. So, apa, apa benda aku punya soalan tadi? Uh, aku, uh, what is the purpose of the augmented tube in your opinion? Uh, untuk <laughs> campur tu kot. Uh, Mixture of air kot. Sebenarnya, ya, yeah. ya, yeah, ya, yeah, dengar, dengar. Dengar tak? Ah, dengar. <coughs> Thank you. Aku just check je takut. Tidur. Ha, Fazil lah tidur lah. Betul Fazil? Ha, 
Harga memang tertua Okay so Exhaust dia akan sembuh kepada tiup Mentetium ni untuk Melajukan angin yang masuk eh, Yang warna biru ni ialah ambient air Ambient air tu angin luar lah Angin luar akan masuk untuk buat apa? Untuk menyejukkan silinder Jadi bila dia sejukkan silinder Dia akan kena dipaksa masuk celah bedah semua ni ha? Itu pasal engine When you run the engine, you must have the cowling. And if you do not have that cowling, cowling ni penutup. Penutup engine ni lah. Eh, engine ni kena ada penutup eh, untuk run dia. Pasal apa? Eh, because if you don't have this cowling, then the air would not want to go to all this, uh, all the nooks and crannies. Eh, it will bypass everything. So, If there is no cowling, all the air is going to the left and right and not to to the engine, not cooling down the engine. So that is very bad eh? because engine will overheat. So whenever you run engine, you must have cowling. Eh? Kalau in niat, engine tak ada cowling, kita run tapi sekejap saja, takut panas. Eh? Bila angin masuk, dia akan masuk jelah beda ni semua dia akan keluar ikut open tapi now we have the exhaust being straight out to be augmented tube with high velocity so what do you think will happen to the augmented tube mouth the mouth of the augmented tube the pressure surrounding it will become low it will drop in pressure why because high velocity of the exhaust is making the pressure drop to drop eh? uh, why that is the Bernoulli principle if you have high velocity you drop the pressure so whenever you have this pressure drop then all the air surrounding the surrounding air will be sucked through this augmented eh? so it will hasten hasten or speeding up the movement of your surrounding air So this uh, cooling air, the one that is cooling the air, uh, cooling the cylinders, is going to go to go out through this augmented tube at a very fast velocity, eh, at a very quick pace, eh, very fast pace. So whenever you have the air being sucked in, heating up. So does the incoming air that is going into the cylinder and to cool down the cylinder. So you are increasing the cooling air movement. When you increase the cooling air movement, you are increasing the amount of cooling air to cool down your cylinder. So that is the purpose of the augmented tube. Yeah, so the exhaust gas is uh, spraying very high velocity gas and it will drop the pressure of the augmented tube so it will suck the surrounding air inside the engine compartment and the air that is uh, cooling down your cylinders your engine then when you sucking it sucking the cooling air that means you are increasing the speed of the incoming air and you are increasing the intake of the cooling air uh, for your engine uh, So it is in cooling. Faham tu? Azik? Azik you there? Azik pun tidur. Aduh. Ada saya ada. Faham. Ah, faham ah, 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 eh? So let's uh, move on. Continue. Okay so this is uh, yang aku cakap tadi lah eh. Ini exhaust muffler. Muffler masuk keluar, angin fresh masuk keluar, angin exhaust masuk sini keluar eh, Tapi ni ada dua lah kiri kanan eh. ah, Yang ini pula ah, Ini pula ialah ah, Augmented view Yang ini, ini exhaust muffler jugalah sama macam ni, yang ni yang separate, yang ni yang tom eh, Yang ini yang Augmented view yang aku baru sebut tadi eh. so, Buang exhaust, lepas tu angin sekitaran ni kena tetap. So, any question? So far? No question? No, sir. 
Very easy isn't it? Ha, ni turbo charger exhaust system tu aku dah tunjuk gambar tadi kat atas. Augment, augmenter exhaust system tadi tu. Ha, okay, tengoklah proper alignment, security attachment. Ha, biasalah tu baca sendiri ya. Ha, exhaust system repairs. Exhaust tank, muffler, tailpipes and so on should be replaced with new or reconditioned component. Instead of being repaired in the field. Ha, so, kalau nak repair pun, you kena hantar workshop untuk welding. Eh? Tu kena test. Lepas you welding tu, kena test balik semula. Tengok bocor ke tak bocor. Eh? Ha, so, tu baca sendirilah. Okay, fuel system types. Eh? So, I think you have learned this also. So, we have two kinds of fuel system. We have the gravity feed and then we have the pressure feed system. So, yang inilah, uh, yang gambar gravity tu. Ini gravity feed. So, as you can see here, uh, ini tanknya duduk di atas, carburetornya duduk di bawah. Uh, tetapi yang ini, yang kat bawah ni, gambar ni, ini pressure feed lah ni. Ini fuel tanknya di bawah. Dia punya carburetor di atas. Maksudnya, engine duduk di atas lah. Yang ni carburetor ni, engine-nya duduk di bawah lah. Jadi, kalau gravity, tak payah pakai pump. Eh? Tengok juga lah. Kalau engine tu besar, then you might want to have a pump juga lah. Eh? Untuk boost. Ha, pasal fuel tu kena laju. Pasal engine-nya besar. Eh? Jadi, kalau wing overhead. Overhead wing. Eh, dalam wing tu biasanya ada fuel tank. Jadi fuel tanknya duduk di atas. Di atas kepala pilot. Eh. Overhead wing. Kalau wingnya duduk di bawah. Then fuel tanknya di bawah lah. Eh, jadi pilot duduk di atas. Wah, engine di atas. Jadi uh, fuel uh, pertama ni. Kalau dia tank di bawah. You kena ada pasang. Ni lah. Auxiliary pump. Auxiliary pump ni electrical pump. Tu so, kena on dia. On dia nanti bunyi kena kena kena. Maksudnya fuel pump dah bunyi lah tu. Eh? Jadi fuel pump berfungsi. Dia akan tarik fuel naik ke atas ke carburetor. Okay. Okay so kita tengok ni dulu. So kita nampak gravity pin ni. Okay nampak tu ada vent tu. Vent tu apa dia? Dia, dia untuk release excessive pressure daripada tank Bukannya release excessive pressure Tetapi memberi pressure oh, macam, ha, macam you nak apa? Macam uh, teh tarik mamak tu eh, Teh ha? susu pekat tu You nak keluarkan susu You nak pakai satu lubang ke dua lubang? Dua sir Salah apa? Sebab untuk ni apa ik Equalkan tu kan, apa pressure kan yang keluar dengan yang masuk. Maksudnya kalau lubang tu satu, susu tu keluar tapi tak keluar banyak dia menipis saja betul. Ha. So, kalau you ubah dua lubang, maksudnya satu angin masuk, satu susu keluar. Betul? Ha, betul. Ha, jadi dua lubang. Maksudnya vent tu masukkan angin. Bila ha. masukkan angin, dia akan bagi pressure. Bila pressure tinggi, dia akan tekan. Ha, sama macam susu tadi. Susu tadi ditekan oleh angin luar. Pasal satu lubang angin masuk, satu lubang susu. Ha, same hmm. thing. Same. Eh? So, sama juga macam ni. Tetapi gambar ni tak betul lah ni. Gambar ni sepatutnya ada bubur fan. fan ventilation. On each tank. Eh? Kalau tak ada ventilation, macam mana fuel nak keluar? So, um. so kalau macam katakanlah dia pakai turbo charger atau super charger, maksudnya dia terbang tinggi. Jadi, ventilation lubang ni akan diventilkan hmm. pada... Can you can you hear me? Kan? Boleh, saya dengar, saya dengar. Ah, asal kan... Okay, never mind. So, this ventilation ni akan di... Uh, masukkan oleh kompres air kompres air daripada turbo charger daripada super charger tu eh, pasal aircraft terbang tinggi uh, pressure dekat langit tu terlalu rendah jadi 
tak cukup untuk bagi pressure, dia akan pakai turbo charger atau super charger. Itulah salah satu kegunaan turbo charger dan super charger tadi. Eh, bukan sahaja untuk bagi enough oxygen to the cylinders, but also to other function. Eh. Faham, pressurization, sir? Fuel tank pressurization. Eh. Okay, sir. Faham. Thank you. Alright, thank you, sir. Uh, so, uh, you tengok ni, ni ada primer ni. Uh, what is the function of primer? Primer ni dia macam chok motosikal. Motosikal kau ada chok kan? Yang? Ah, ada sir yang kalau motor tak nak hidup. Ah, jadi chok motosikal tu ialah primer lah. Primer untuk kapal terbang. Jadi, primer tu you akan... Dia macam pump eh, primer tu macam pump, dia akan bagi fuel, dia inject direct to the cylinder. Ah uh, Untuk easy starting eh, kalau engine susah nak start, you akan pancutkan sikit fuel supaya senang start. Betul eh, choke macam tu eh, choke motosikal. Yang? Ah, sir. Sama. So, primer ni untuk... Uh, untuk carburetor lah. Eh. Biasanya untuk yang carburetor. Kalau fuel injection, dia tak payah ada primer. Dia on saja fuel pump tu, nanti dia akan uh, paksa fuel masuk dalam sini. Tapi kalau dia carburetor, then you kena ada primer lah. This primer tu macam chok motosikal. Eh, dia akan pancurkan fuel lebih sikit dekat silinder supaya senang start engine. Eh, jadi primer tu dia can be electrical, dia can be hand pump, eh. so electrical pump pun boleh, uh, hand pump pun boleh, eh. bergantung pada manufacturer. So untuk so, yang uh, fuel tank dia duduk di bawah, you kena on auxiliary pump. Jadi gede-gede-gede, pump tu dah berjalan, maksudnya fuel sudah masuk ke dalam carburetor, baru engine boleh start. Kalau auxiliary pump tak boleh hidup, Ah tak boleh lah start. Eh, pasal apa? Here we have the engine driven pump. Eh, up here also we have engine driven pump. Tapi engine driven pump tu hanya berfungsi masa engine dah ber, ber, berpusing. Engine dah berjalan. Eh, kalau engine tak berjalan, dia tak jalan juga. Ah, jadi engine driven pump ni, it is being driven by engine. If the engine is not functioning, it is not turning. So, auxiliary pump ni electrical pump lah. Ah, dia yang kena Paksa fuel naik untuk hidupkan ini. Okay, so I think we stop right there.